John Anik and Kenny Florian podcast. John Anik and Kenny Florian. I f***ing love them. I can't get enough of them. Let's hear that buzz tonight. Big job there from Duffy and Frank Mir is hurt now. Down goes Duffy. Oh, God. Frank Mir does it again. Rock em, sock em, robots here. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe There are a couple of absolutely self-involved bull****. Here are your hosts, John Anik and Kenny Florian. Oh, good to be with you. April Fool's Day. What a stupid fucking holiday. Monday, April 1st, 2024. It is episode 478 of the Anakin Florian podcast. Presented by DraftKings. Ken Flo, you don't strike me as a big April Fool's guy. I was trying to drum up something to do to my daughters today. And my eldest, Riley, was like, hey, daddy, can you do something to mess with us for April Fool's Day? And I'm like, oh, man, beat me to the punch. <laughs> Kenny, any uh, any April Fool's bones in your body or what? Not really, kid. I, I remember when I was a kid, I used to, uh, you know, like they have like the, the, the sink and then they have that like the spray hose oh, next, to, yeah. next to it. I used to tape down, you know, the handle there so that when you turned on the sink, it would kind of spray everywhere. That was kind of my April Fool's joke. But I haven't done that for like, I don't know, 30 years. So uh, I got nothing for you, man. My kids are, you know, my daughter kind of wants to start doing some April Fool's jokes, but I'm not really about it. Maybe you should mess with the sink today for the first time in 30 years. So I'm an identical twin, as most of our listenership knows, right? So when you're an identical twin, every day is April Fool's Day, right? You can just mess with people all the time, right? I mean, how many times do you think Jason and I have been asked, like, hey, do you guys ever mess with people? Or did you just, <laughs> did you ever mess with girls or teachers back in the day? You know, no, I'm not much of, a, of an April Fool's Day guy. So I didn't leverage being an identical twin fuck with people all the time. So I did a couple of years ago. And I think Kenny knows this. Uh, I did get Bruce Buffer pretty good. So it was actually during the pandemic and I was playing online poker, not as much as Bruce Buffer maybe thought I was playing. Right. But I called him on April Fool's Day from my minivan. I was in the minivan game at the time. <laughs> And I said, hey, oh, hey, man, you know, I uh, just lo- take it on the chin. Poker, not good. Get a little out of control. And he's like, Johnny, how much you lose? It's like 10K. He said, oh, John, you know, like as if I had lost $10,000 the night before. And I know our viewership, a lot of j- big spectrum in terms of the means out there. But for me, losing 10K would be a big fucking loss. Right. And Buff's like, oh, my God. You know, and I was like, no, April Fool's, buddy. I just lost, like, <laughs> you know, 800 bucks. So. Yeah, not much of an April Fool's Day guy. Did not intend to open the show that way, but uh, we have a lot to get into today. Before I get into the mixed martial arts, and I don't want to offend you like I do Ray Longo sometimes when uh, when I talk about things that aren't MMA related. But uh, <laughs> am I allowed to ask you how your weekend was? Are you on testosterone replacement therapy? I mean, Cody, look at this fucking guy. Oh, come on. I mean, I mean I, I'm getting, getting pretty jacked now. I mean, yeah, doing uh, some strength no. and conditioning? No, a, a little bit. I didn't do it today. Tomorrow. Tomorrow's strength, strength and conditioning day. I... Uh, I'm eating like crap, though, kid. That's the problem. I, I I don't have great discipline with my diet, so it's probably more uh, like fat than muscle, to be honest. So, is it like <laughs> baked goods? Is it just savory, like meals? You just like don't don't uh, you know prevent yourself from eating things. What's uh, what's out of control with the diet? I think it's a little sweet tooth. Like you know, yeah. like my, my wife will come home like cookies, uh, donuts, you know, bread, stuff like that. Like I'm a bread and sweets guy. So, uh, not good. Not good. Mainly chocolate so, cookies. Chocolate. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. gotta have that dot chocolate, right? Isn't that the healthy kind? The dot so chocolate. Both. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for me, uh, the Florida orange juice is very hard to, uh, to yeah. avoid down here for sure. But, yeah. uh, yeah, I'm trying to not drink Gatorade, not drink fucking Gatorade, zero sugar. And, uh, <laughs> Trying not to alienate our young listeners by swearing every other word. I'm trying not to drink Diet Coke. I do notice, like, I went no juice January, no soda, no juice. And, uh-huh. uh, you know, I lost like four pounds, like, right Nice. Away. All right, lot to get into today. Headlines is brought to you by Cuervo. Now's a good time to enjoy the tequila that invented tequila. We will recap UFC Fight Night Blanchfield versus Fior. Or is it Fioro? Truly don't care much, yeah. but. <laughs> Saudi Arabia has a main event, Kenny. June 22nd, the combat sports leader descends upon Saudi Arabia and your main event, Robert Whitaker versus Kamzat Shimaev, middleweight title eliminator. And I am very excited for that fight. Your thoughts? Oh, that's a main event, kid. Uh, I love it. 
I love it. That's a fantastic fight. Very interesting fight as well. Obviously, you have a guy in Robert Whitaker who was so experienced, um, who really knows how to manage his energy over the course of five rounds for the most part. Uh, former champion and certainly a tremendous gauge as far as skill level and experience to see where Hamza Chimaev is as a fighter at this stage of his career. So, uh, you know, obviously Hamza has tremendous power. Uh, he has a pace that can tire out a lot of people out there. Does he have the pace? Does he have the experience? Does he have the wrestling to do that to someone like Robert Whitaker? I don't know. And the fact that Robert Whitaker is taking this fight after perhaps not having the best performance, not having managed his efficiency so well in his last fight or two fights ago against Drickus Duplessis, it makes it all the more interesting. So I'm fascinated by the fight. This is big, and uh, I think this is the main event that a lot of people were kind of asking for. So first, let's talk about Robert <clears throat> Whitaker, if we could. Win over Paulo Costa February 17th at UFC 298. That was after the loss at UFC 290 to Drikus Duplessis. So you see now Robert Whitaker's turning around pretty quickly in a good active competition cycle. And essentially five weeks after his last fight against Paulo Costa, a riveting win and performance. Yep. He has another fight on the books and a huge fight against Hamza Chimaev. So I love this for Robert Whitaker. Certainly, if he's going to state his case for a championship opportunity, I think it's a perfect opponent for Robert to do that against. And I was going back through the body of work. It really is pretty incredible to think about you and I, uh, relatively young at the time, on the Gold Coast of Australia in 2012, tough smashes finale, as Robert Whitaker, at 21, 22 years of age, made his UFC debut. And gosh, man, like just has so much respect from this fan base and this roster and still going strong here, you know, 12, 13 years later. It's amazing. And I'm not surprised. I remember, I think the thing that we both talked about the most, uh, when we were talking about and discussing a actually young Robert Whitaker, what was he 19, 20 years old? I don't know. I forget what it was. He was in his early twenties probably at the time, but how mature he was and how seriously he was taking the sport and how much potential he had because of it. Already had a not had a feel for the knockout and has only developed and gotten better since then. So th this is uh, an exciting opportunity for him for sure. All right, so Hamza Chimaev, the other side of this equation, seven and zero in the UFC. Now, two of those fights in 2020 Fight Island took place in a span of ten days, and his first three UFC fights happened in a span of sixty five days. So. Kenny, essentially 42 or whatever percent of his UFC body of work happened those first 65 days, which is a, a long time ago. So now he's back for the first time since that majority decision went over Kamar Usman at UFC 294 last October. And those who don't believe that right now Hamza Chimaev is worthy of a middleweight title shot. You beat Robert Whitaker and you can immediately state your case. So what are your thoughts on this fight from Hamza Chimaev's perspective competitively uh, inside the octagon and just, uh, you know, the overall magnitude of this fight for, uh, believe it or not, he's still undefeated, Hamza Chimaev. Well, number one, <clears throat> I think there's a lot of people who have things to say about Hamza Chimaev, but at the end of the day, they're not going out there and stepping up to the plate and taking a fight against Hamza Chimaev. And I think that's kind of, the ultimate sign of respect and perhaps even fear in a lot of ways is, you know, when the UFC comes calling and they offer someone like a Hamza Chimaev, very few people are saying yes to that. So he clearly is a dangerous man. Uh, he's dangerous because of the physical attributes that he brings in to the octagon. He has that wrestling background, which is absolutely menacing. I, I think the one knock on him or, or perhaps doubt in regards to Hamzat Chumayev. It's not his heart. It's how he manages that energy over the course of three rounds and now five rounds. Um, again, I, I, I'm really curious to see how he handles it. If we do get to those rounds four and five, um, he's facing a guy in Robert Whitaker that if you beat him and if you do it decisively, there is no uh, discussion after that, really. I mean, I think for Hamza Chimaev, if he beats someone like Rob Whitaker, he should be the next in line to fight for the belt at 185 pounds. And yes, I know there's a, a lot of other guys there with big names who are great fighters, but I think Hamza Chimaev uh, has been knocking on that door for a little bit now. 
uh, getting over a win over Kamaru Usman is still impressive, even though it was at 185 and not 170 pounds. So uh, this is uh, a very, very intriguing fight to me. All right, that's your main event for Saudi Arabia. And can we put some respect on the name Kevin Holland for fighting Hamza Chimaev on one day's notice? But that is an incredible, incredible main event. And it remains to be seen as to which direction they will go when it comes to Drikus Duplessis and his first middleweight championship title defense. Sean Strickland, Israel Adesanya. Looks like Ken Flo, UFC 305, Perth, Western Australia, August 18th or so. I, if I'm Duplessis, it's like I'm not trying to go. I mean, I don't even know geographically. I do know that Perth is as far as I can go from here in the friendly confines of South Florida. Um, forgive my geographical ignorance. I think I changed schools for eighth grade and I missed geography. But <laughs> I mean, where is Perth, Western Australia in relation to South Africa? If I'm DDP, I'm not trying to go to Perth for... Uh, for my championship title defense. It's a long flight. I, no matter where you are in the world, I think going to Perth, Australia is going to be a long flight. Yeah. I hear it's absolutely beautiful there, by the way. Um, it's so far, I would like Kenny. To it's, it's far. Fine. It it's, is very no, far. It's a great place. People are lovely. The grass, the people, right? And I hope <laughs> you brought your bathing suit, right? I wish I had the Happy Gilmore soundbite. Yeah, no, it's great. I think sometimes it's just hard to get to. Even a lot of Aussies will suggest that it's easier for them to get to Singapore than it is to go cross country to Perth, Western Australia. But uh, we have a lot of uh, incredible athletes, of course, emerging from WA and uh, we're excited to be there. Wheels up to Perth, Western Australia. But I bring it up in the context, of course, of this fight between Kamsa Chimaev and Robert Whitaker, a title eliminator to be sure. All right. So, Kenny, what were you doing? UFC fight night, Blanchfield versus Fjord. Fioro, whatever the fuck it is, the French people are all over us. You know, I don't know if they asked her to re-say her name this week or not. But Manon gets it done over Aaron Blanchfield. What were you doing for the fight card? I was sleeping. I watched it the next day. Too yeah. late at night for me, Kenny. It's too late. Typically, those are. Um, and especially when it's kind of a fight that candidly wasn't the most exciting. Um, somehow, I stayed up. I, I had energy, man. I, I don't know how it happened. Uh, apparently, That's because you had I, $250 straight on Manon Fjord plus 164. <laughs> I did. That, that, that helped, actually. Um, so I was intrigued by that aspect for sure. But um, yeah, it was a late night, man. But, uh, you know, a, a good performance. And, and that's kind of the way I saw it. Again, when I was watching tape, I just became a little bit more more and more confident as I watched more and more tape on Fioro, Fioro or Fior, whatever the heck it is. Um, and uh, I, I think that it kind of played out the way I, I was seeing it. And, and Blanchfield just needs more work when it comes to her striking and her wrestling in general. So winning is the name of the game. And however aesthetically pleasing this fight was or was not for you, right? If I'm scaling fights on a scale of 1 to 10 in terms of how much I enjoyed them, maybe Rose Namajunas, Amanda Hebos, I'm giving like a five and a half, six. Is that fair, right? And I'm giving this thing maybe a four and a half, five. Does that sound obnoxious? I mean, it's about right. winning's the name of the game, Ken Flo. Manon Fioro is 7-0 and in the UFC, and she just beat the credentialed Aaron Blanchfield. 24 years old or otherwise, 50 to 45 across the board. And, you know, really, I thought just maximized her offensive opportunities, didn't take a lot of damage, managed risk well, uh, even if you and I didn't love the fight. Uh, yeah. Certainly for you, you're watching it through a lens of always having to predict these big fights and main events and giving out bets to the masses. So I'm sure for you, there was an extra layer of enjoyment watching Manol Fiore as a plus 164 underdog do that. Um, but winning's the name of the game, and all she does is win. So if you yeah. didn't have this whole trilogy situation going on with uh, Alexa Grasso and Valentina Shevchenko, what else does this woman need to do exactly? She needs to entertain. Is that what she needs to do now? Well, I, I think you put it perfectly. And, and you know, the commentators, you know, I, I know Paul and, and Mike were kind of asking for more action uh, from Manon. Uh, and the reality is, at the end of the day, you're going to fight within your skill set. You know, it's it's like me going... You know, Paul Felder hits a takedown, uh, and I'm not trying to knock on, on Paul at all. I love Paul. But let's say he's on the ground, and I'm like, man, I don't understand why Paul Felder isn't doing this uh, inverted go-go plata here. He could finish it. It's like, that's not within his skill set. That's not within his skill set. Even if it's there, I shouldn't expect Paul to just go out there and do some submission just because it's available. You know, uh, Mano isn't going to be this huge knockout artist. She really hasn't shown that. Can she? I, I bet she can to a certain extent. But why would you go outside of your strategy 
just to entertain for entertainment's sake. It, it, th- this is a sport. She's going out there to get the win. If she goes out there and she becomes exciting for four and a half rounds and gets knocked out or gets submitted in round five, well, no one was going to remember that, hey, but she's a really entertaining fighter. No, she lost. It's an L at the end of the day. So she has to do what she needs to do to get the win. She did that uh, in a dominant, really dominant fashion, winning all five rounds. That's the way I had it. That's the way all the judges had it. So, um, hey, that's that's still very impressive against someone in Blanchfield who's very dangerous and was very determined to win that fight. More on the main event coming up later, but uh, we don't want to make a good man wait. And now with us on the guest line, one of the finest MMA brains that you could possibly pick in the world. Elite mixed I can martial discuss arts. the main event with you. Don't act oh, like great. you got to move on. For the, I, can, well, I, I want can, to talk about you. I would like to talk about you. I would like too. to talk about you. Oh, uh, please, now, now joining us, mixed martial arts commentator extraordinaire, former professional fighter, host of Sirius XM Fight Nations, unlocking the cage, the great Jimmy Smith is with us. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah. you. Appreciate that. And, and I get to announce it now also, as of today, uh, play by play commentator for Pro Box TV. So I'm jumping in doing boxing. Got that gig signed this morning. So that I start this week. Another great thing. Congratulations. So always be closing. Continue. Always be closing. And, Continue with the praise. Uh, well, Love that's that. good that that takes away one of my questions in terms of uh, any irons in the fire. So that's a beautiful thing. I mean, that I was going to get into the Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback situation. Russell Wilson, Justin Fields. Who do you like? I mean, there's you a lot. You can we keep can- going with the Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross uh quotes that lose everybody under 30 yeah. or you know we could go talk we can talk about the quarterback situation justin fields more physical potential and my good friend is a a, a bears fan and she was just visiting and i was like she goes oh of course it's gonna be great with you guys of course it's gonna be wonderful wow. with you so yeah an upside in terms of physical talent we just have a lot to work out when it comes to the quarterback situation for sure it's gonna be one of those seasons yeah, I think it is for uh, the Patriots as well. But the great Jimmy Smith is with us. It's really good to hear your voice. Certainly, we've been ingesting your work from afar, but great to have you on these airwaves. So uh, how is life? Are you still in South Florida? How's fatherhood and all that? Oh, man, I, I got a two-year-old and a four-year-old, about to be a three-year-old and a five-year-old. So their birthdays are like nine days apart. So, yeah, th- there's that. It's been crazy busy, man. Um the ups and downs of this business and all that stuff. But South Florida has been good, man. South Florida has been good for me in terms of, of, of where to get gigs and everything. Once again, uh, pro box TV, they shoot out of Tampa. So it's, you know, three hour drive every other Wednesday to go up there and do the shows. And then they shoot a boxing show here, you know, a, a two times a week boxing show for an hour in Deerfield, which is, you know, as you know, what, 20 minutes from us or something like that. So, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a good location, man, but yeah, keeping up with training and all the fun stuff, you know how it is, man. And unlocking the cage is five days a week, correct? No, now it's two days a week, which okay. gives me room to do other stuff. It was right. five days a week, and then they moved it to Monday and Friday. All right. Um, so I do, you know, basically pre-fight and post-fight, and then this gig fills up the middle of the week. The the show I do shoots every other Wednesday is a live show, and then the 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 studio shows are Tuesday and Thursday. So yeah, my, my week just got filled up, which is awesome. All right, so it's not because you praised Kenny Florian that we put you on the program, but that you did acknowledge. Exactly. Why you put me on? That's ah, exactly. One hundred percent. Kenny's like, no, I, I make no pretense of why Jimmy's on the show. I like, praise Kenny Floyd. That's exactly why. That's why. That's fine. I'm well, fine. With that. Hey, no, okay. my twin brother was like, maybe you should give Jimmy Smith a segment. I was like, well, let's see how he does on fucking Monday. You know, <laughs> dude, just give me the target and let me roll. No, but seriously, all joking aside, anytime somebody <laughs> brings up the you know best fighter not win a title in the UFC, I always think Kenny because I, I think. Kenny's skill set at the time was unbelievable. Took two legends, and Sean Shirk is one of those guys where your modern fan might not know who Sean Shirk is. That dude was a monster. His window was a little small. We know about him getting suspended, doping violation. His window was kind of small, but Jesus, what a monster back then at 100. I'm like, I'm telling Kenny Floyd what a monster he was, but yes, an absolute monster. So that's why I always put Kenny at the top of the list because it took two legends, BJ Penn and Jose Aldo, and then a monster in Sean Shirk. To keep him out of a title run, so that's and, that's and he was all natural too, dude. That's the I thing. know, right? You know? He was just every was 155 all, pound all, is built. he's on my all natty team for sure. <laughs> no <laughs> question. You know, seriously, all right. Now that we dude, can all was... talk about it because we have some hindsight here, <laughs> there were always those guys where people who weren't in the sport went, "Do you think he?" I go, "What do you think that is?" <laughs> you know, they they don't know, and they're like, "Does he?" And I go, "What?" The, 
No, we all have muscles bulging out of the sides of our necks. Like Dude. a young Vitor. You look at young Vitor and you go, Jesus Christ, how did you function? It's, it's absurd. And we all knew it when we were there, but it's so funny to hear people who, who aren't into it and, and don't know. You're like, yeah, of course. He's too out of his head. That's I'll, never he forget, I'll never forget weighing in and doing the face off with him and being like, dude, I'm taller than him. He's not that big. I'm looking at him like, this dude's not that big. This is great. I'm going to do great <laughs> tomorrow. And I get in the cage and I look across and I'm going, who the hell is that guy? It looked like he tripled in size. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, God, what did I do? What did yeah. I do? What um, did I do? And one of those guys, man, you feel, and there are certain guys like they look strong. Like yeah. Jacare, I got to train with Jacare. And then you yeah. grab him and you go, Oh my God, he's stronger yeah. than he looks. You right, just go, right. you, you look strong and you're stronger than that in real life. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure Sean Shark must have been one of those guys who go, Jesus. Unfortunately, he was just as strong as he looked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was very strong. Unreal. Uh, Unreal. Dude, so, so what do you think about this main event? And yeah. uh, do, do you think that uh, Fjordal or Fjord can, can be a champion of that division? She can. The problem is the ones at the top, and I mean that by Alexa Grasso and Valentina Shevchenko can do everything and they do it really really well i think i think the problem we saw with with aaron blanchfield is yeah you have a great ground game you really do have that the rest of the mma mix isn't quite developed 100 percent, and you're in the top five and the way i look at it at, at this level is playoff football like okay wow you're 14 and 2 in the regular season that's great wonderful fabulous can you beat the playoff teams that can do a lot of things they'll find the weaknesses in your game and the problem with valentina and alexa grasso is they don't have a lot of weaknesses in their game Fira can. I don't think a lot of fighters let her bounce in and out. What she's really at her best is, is bouncing around on the outside. She's quick. She has a, a, a good right hand, good lead, power punches. But no one's going to let her stay at sniper's range the whole time. Once right. she gets past that next level, you know, obviously a title contender, the, the current champion, whoever she fights next, isn't going to allow her that distance the entire time. You get windows of it. Right. And and I think that's just across sports, period, is the windows of 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 opportunity to get get smaller and smaller and smaller. Right. College to the pros to the Super Bowl. And it's the same thing in MMA. And so that's what we're looking at is how many fighters are going to let her stay at her range that she wants from here on out. Um, I know, obviously, we have USC 300 coming up, but uh, I guess we can go a little bit past that for whatever, but whatever has been announced. But what's the fight out there that uh, you're most excited about? Here's an interesting one that I find intriguing, and I'll explain why. Bo Nichols' next fight will test whether anyone can have an international wrestling career and have time to get good in MMA. And I think that's kind of on trial. And I, I think a lot of people don't realize it, that, you know, there was a time in the early days of MMA where you could have, you know, college wrestling, and then you could have an international career, and you're 27, 28, and you could go to MMA and do well. Now you're hearing a lot of guys go, I got to choose between making a run at the Olympics or MMA. You can't do both because now a 27-year-old wrestler, I don't care how good you are, that skill set of having to pick all that up, you don't have the years to do it. Now, people are talking about Henry Cejudo. Henry Cejudo never wrestled in college. He fought in he, – he didn't fight. He, he competed in the Olympics. He's 21. So he had time to turn around and, and have an MMA career. Bo Nickel had a bit of an international career. He ran into you know David Taylor, so he's never going to make an Olympic team. So then he came back to MMA. Whether somebody can have that full international career and be 26, 27 and go, I'll try MMA. Bo Nickel is testing that right now. And his success will determine whether or not other people, Gable Stevenson's of the world, who, who want to do well internationally and may want to continue a little bit longer – do that or they come to MMA. So to me, that's why that, that fight is so intriguing to me. Can somebody do it coming in comparatively late like they could 10, 15 years ago? We were talking last week about a select few UFC athletes, Kamzat Shimaev, Bo Nickel. I even talked about Raul Rosas Jr. as just having this electricity about them. Like I didn't even bat an eye when Bo Nickel was leading off the pay-per-view, Jimmy Smith, because I don't care who he headlines or excuse me, who he fights against when Bo Nickel makes that walk uh, in front of a pay-per-view audience in front of that audience at T-Mobile Arena. I don't know, man. He's on the short list for me of guys that just take it to that next level. No promoter got rich telling you what to watch. They get rich reacting to what you you respond to. Yeah. You know, and and, and I, I was in the WWE when, when you know, uh, you know, Vince McMahon would go, how did the house shows go this weekend? And they went, well, so-and-so's really getting over. They really like him. Okay, turn him face. <laughs> that that's it it's yeah. how are the fans reacting to them they like this all right keep doing that 
Yeah, right. And, and you know, it's not, no, we're going to make sure they fit this mold that we want. The crowd wants this. Give them that. Okay. Yeah. And that's the end of the decision process. You know, so many fans, it's, it's hilarious to me. Why doesn't this person who deserves or earns or right and wrong, hey, how who are the fans responding to this person? They're not as good. Huh. Show it up, you know what, and set fire to it because that doesn't draw money. What draws money is fans' reaction. And Bo Nickel, as you said, has that charisma, right? Now, it's a matter of how far can he go. That's an academic discussion that is much, much deeper. How far can Kamzat Shemaev go when he has trouble past the second round? Those are tactical discussions that are very different than what do fans react to? Because they react to Bo Nickel, Kamzat Shemaev, Raul Rosas Jr. for sure. Some some fans suggest or some pundits suggest that Kayla Harrison, Alex Pereira, Bo Nickel, high level specialists really seem to attract uh, and have sort of a magneticism with the fan base. Do you subscribe to that theory at all? There's a can they do it here attitude, right? Yeah, There's a yeah. man. They've been really dominant. Yeah. You win two Olympic gold medals in judo. Can you do it here? And And there's that that idea of the unknown of they didn't come up through this sport necessarily. And so it's a little bit of a throwback. It's a little bit of a, can they duplicate this? And I think that question in people's minds uh, means a lot. Also, they are used to a microphone in your face at the Olympics. They are used to high level competition where, you know, a lot of people that came up through MMA and, you know, you're fighting in a local show and you're suddenly in the UFC, you don't necessarily have the, the gift of gab. You don't have the charisma. You're not used to this high level stuff. Bo nickel against Iowa, Pin the guy with a spladle and jumped up and went, yeah, Iowa crowd. You know, right, that, you're right. used to that pressure. You're right. used well, to thing. that kind that, of thing. Yeah, absolutely. That's the thing. I, I think that, you know, if you ask any college wrestler over the last, you know, 10 or 15 years, any college wrestling fan, hey, do you know who Bo Nickel is? Yeah, absolutely. They know who Bo Nickel is. So they're going to turn in to watch, see how this wrestler that they followed for years uh, does an MMA. Same thing. If you do judo, do you know who Kayla Harrison is? Yeah, I know who Kayla Harrison is, right? Do, do you know, uh, you know, if you follow kickboxing, you're a kickboxer, you know who Alex Pereira is? Yeah, so th they bring in everybody from their sport, right, to go in and watch. And, th and that's a big reason for it as well, for sure. And I think the MMA fans go like, who is this person who's so big in this thing? Right? Yeah. There's yeah, the yeah, negative, yeah. which is a positive. Yeah. Uh, you know, right. a lot of people, I didn't watch wrestling. Who's this Bo Nickel? I hope he gets smashed. Right. This yeah. punk right. who has, I, I love it, man. Love me, hate me, don't ignore me is is what these guys bring because either you're a fan of them from before or you don't know who they are and why they're getting all this hype every time i see the hate for bone nickel you know opening up usc 300 i go you're writing him a check right now you're yeah, writing him right. checks yeah. with your hatred and it's great and if you're if you're a uh, uh if you're a fighter you got to know that you got to know it. combat sports commentator jimmy smith with us here on the anakin florian podcast our former colleague and by the way you know ken Flo is this nice guy everybody loves you know Look at this asshole, Jimmy, right? This is his, oh. uh, this is Kenny when he was like 17. Sorry, Kenny. Wow. Right? He's like, mom, I don't want to go get my picture taken for the soccer all-star team. Right? So, late puberty, <laughs> huh? Late puberty. Hit you a little late. Dude, so late. Dude, have, everything in my life was late. It just, yeah. that's the story of my life. Yeah. Dude, uh, you know, t I'm, I'm going totally off topic here, but I don't care. My family, my dad's side of the family, I was talking to, to, to my wife about it. She would ask me these questions animals like full beards in <laughs> high school hillbillies from kentucky Damn. animals and and she goes you know like it's weird our son has these huge hands these big feet and i go he's yeah i, I go uh, you know uh, my daughter's four she's like this tall she's wow. she just towers over every other kid i'm like you know my That's wife was, was is my height damn near my height and she was that tall at 14. Right. And so we're just, right. I'm like, oh my God, my daughter's going to look 20. She's going to be 12. <laughs> it, I looked, I looked like this, like in high school. Like, yeah. you know, I just kind of look like this. And it's, it, you, it, it, it has, its, it has its ups and it has its downs. Cause like grown men would like want to fight me. And I'm like, assuming I was like 35. I know, dude, I'm 16, bro. You know, like, I mean, what I'll, are you doing hanging out in high school? Dude, I go here. I go to school here. I don't know what to tell you. Cause like, it's, not, it's not everything's cracked up to me, man. That's funny. <laughs> All right, so I want to throw this one at you. A couple more minutes here with Jimmy Smith. So one of our longtime listeners, Bruce Marshall, wrote me this question. And I've been accused of being hyperbolic at times, and I think guilty as charged. Uh, happy Easter. My one criticism of MMA is the hyperbole created at times. Like, great respect for Luke and Buckley, but let's not start anointing Joaquin Buckley. The next one on that performance. Rare athlete, but against better talent, I don't see great success. Looking forward to the pros take. And I think Bruce, as a longtime listener, Jimmy, is worried 
and probably it's well rooted that I'm going to come on here today and be like, dude, I'm fucking telling you, Joaquin Buckley's a man, dude, it's going to be, you know, and I do tend to sometimes get a little bit too uh, hyped and away from fact when I get excited about something. So what'd you make of Joaquin Buckley and what do you make of that as a greater theme? All right, number one, I thought Joaquin Buckley had the best performance of his career against the biggest veteran of his career. I think um, Vicente Luque, and we've all seen it, all three of us have seen it, just leave me alone. Right there, there was a little bit of just leave me alone. I, I didn't get the sense of I can get in there, this young buck, and I can do something. Yeah. It was more leave me alone and, and, and get out of my face and, and I'll give up rounds. And I, I just saw Vicente Luque not using his offense the way he should. And if you don't stop a guy like Joaquin Buck, who has incredible physical talent, he's confident, he's young, trying to build his career, he's never going to get off you. Okay, number one. Number two, it's our job as commentators to get you excited about what you're seeing. If we go over the top, fine. It's it's an oversell is better than an undersell. Yeah. If we're going to oversell and then you walk off the lot, that's not our problem. It's our job to, oh my God, this is amazing. You can agree, you can disagree. But that moment of excitement is what makes you watch the next fight, whether you agree with me or not. So I hear that all the time, the hyperbole, he's over the top. Dude, he's selling the excitement of what is happening in front of you. And if you disagree with it, fine, but it's always better to get excited and hyped in that moment. There are all these times like we are having right now where we're going to analyze like crazy and break it down. That is the time for sober reflection. During the fight itself, it is our job to get you excited about what you're seeing. So, Anik, you do an amazing job at that, 100%. And, and there's no other way to say it. You're the man, Jimmy Smith. You can listen to him on Sirius XM Fight Nation's Unlocking the Cage YouTube channel is popping as well. And on Instagram, it is at J Smith MMA. We might just have to create a little segment for you. We'll see if your rate is prohibitive, but we appreciate you know what I'm talking. You know, you know what it is. You already know this. Okay. Right. Thank you. I'm here All for right. you guys anytime. Appreciate you both, man. You're the best. You're the man, dude. There he is on Instagram at J Smith MMA. Jimmy Smith with us here. On the Anakin Florian podcast, Ray Longo coming up in about a minute. But as many of you know, the thrill and excitement of March Mania continues in DraftKings Sportsbook. One of America's top rated sportsbook apps is giving new customers a shot to turn five bucks into one hundred and fifty dollars instantly in bonus bets with any college basketball bet. We have arrived at the last four standing, ladies and gentlemen, for our listeners and viewers in North Carolina, for whom DraftKings Sportsbook is now live in your state. We told you last week, NC State. Biggest underdog long shot to win it all. 90 to 1. Still alive. Story of the tournament. They'll now face Purdue as nine point underdogs coming up this weekend. And of course, also on DraftKings this weekend is UFC Fight Night. Allen versus Curtis, too. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Get in the game. Use code AFPOD. New customers can bet five bucks to get $150 instantly in bonus bets only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code AFPOD. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in West Virginia, visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash bball for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. All right, we only get to do these celebratory Ray Longo minutes so often. Let's get to the star of the show in the Ray Longo minute. It's now time for the Ray Longo minute. I want you to punch a hole in this fucking chest. That's what I want. The Ray Longo minute. Starring Ray Longo. The John Anik and Kenny Florian podcast. Oh, man. Wow, the Minuteman didn't want to stop clapping there. Ray Longo. <laughs> hey, wait. Well, you guys, do you guys wake up and center each other? Does, does, does Cody do that for you? I'm always out of line. You guys look perfect. So when well, we I go like from the, the two shot. Yeah, you I do like all, all black, right? Uh, do you have special lighting? Because I look like a fucking ghost right now. <laughs> I, I'm really starting to feel my age. I need sun. So I was in the sun all weekend if you really oh, want to know and i am in a uh, i'm in a lit professional studio granted in my master bedroom you know because they better. don't pay me like dc we're in the master bedroom but we're getting it done ray <laughs> longo so much to get into with you how we doing how we doing how we feeling how's the body how's the hip <laughs> everything's good everything's good a great weekend I'd like to bang out a couple of things couple of besides the fight some highlights Please. I tell you, hanging out with Bisbing, 
I, I too, he's just my type of guy, man. He's just fucking street guy through and through. Tells it like it is. My wife loves him. Everybody that met him loves him. He's he's a you know big charismatic guy. Just you know, I like Mike when he used to bust my balls. He might not even remember, but when like he would like come up to me, you got to tell Weidman to stop it. What the hell's good? <laughs> he could, he's a guy that could insult me. I couldn't care because I know it's so real and genuine that it's he's just a good guy. So I had fun hanging out with him. And then the night of the fight, uh seeing Burt Watson while we were walking oh, wow. out. Oh, wow. I mean, I'll tell you, Kenny, unbelievable. The impact that guy has on people, uh, you know, just through his integrity and character. And, you know, Weidman, you know, we brought him backstage. I mean, it was organic. It was beautiful. Great to see the guy still going. That's Same cool. energy he always had. Uh and, you know, he shot me a text this morning, a beautiful text. And I, I you know, I was going to text him back and I go, I, I can't even, it'll take me three hours because I'm not the best writer in the world. Right. So I, I called him and I said, Bert, listen, man, that, you know, you're an impactful guy that you had that type of impact on everybody that was at that fight. And just a beautiful conversation with a guy we got to catch up. He's got a book coming out being Burt Watson. I can't wait to read it. You know, he gave me an insight to some of the stories, the old stories we all love to hear. And, you know, actually motivated me to start getting my ass in gear and putting some of the the good stories that, you know, we probably all hold, maybe heard and maybe, you know, add a little something. But being Burt Watson, I mean, just getting off the phone with the guy. Can't wait to see it. I he's think it is out. So let's let's do it, man. He's a legend. He's a legend, yeah. and he always held to his character. It's not easy to do today, man. Loyal as they come, it's a, to me, it's inspirational. And, uh, you know, like I told him, I said, Bert, I came in this world as a stand-up guy. I'm going as a stand-up guy. I don't really want to compromise my principles. So all good stuff, man. Look at you. Look, Look at, at Ray Longo. Similarly beloved to Burt Watson, Ray Longo, right? A lot of love for you in Atlantic City, as expected. Any haters out there? I'm going to say none. Really? No, yeah, I'm going to say, good. you upset? No, no, I'm not <laughs> upset. You're upset. Haters, you know? Kenny, no, he hater, went, you, come on. Kenny, he went from happy to, you sure? <laughs> it had to be one. <clears throat> no, the love was unbelievable. Really unbelievable. Good. All right. I don't even know where to begin today. Kenny, can you take the reins, please, of this Ray Longo <laughs> minute? I mean, let's start with Dennis Bazooka, shall we? Right, yes, and then we right. can sort of ease into you fucking cheaters. Okay? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, oh, <laughs> wow. shit! Wow! Oh, <laughs> wait, don't put a damper on my day. You know, I'm joking yeah. around. I mean, I, I could just sit here. It, it, what I thought that was normal to fucking. <laughs> what, what are we now? All of a sudden, we're babies. Oh my god! Uh, oh, we'll, we'll get into that. Go all right, let's so. I don't know if Dennis Bazookia took his strength and conditioning to the next level or if I'm reading too much into things, but he seemed to greet all of the urgency that came with this fight with all of the required offense and aggression to produce his first UFC win, first UFC finish. I thought he had all his weapons going and handled the different stances of his opponent beautifully uh, i did think he gassed a little bit there round two but the finish came early round three so uh that's neither here nor there uh congratulations on on a, on a huge win for db yes and bazooka you know like we see him in the gym so we know what he could do but you know when it comes fight time you got to be able to do it and i'm glad he was able to finally put it together and put whatever demons he had inside him behind him and you know he got what he wanted so uh you know, hopefully this will free him up mentally and he'll be able to move forward in the in the right way. What do you think the difference was in, in his performance? Because he looked sharp as a tack, man. You know, I mean, he did change up a couple of things. I mean, I know he went to, uh, you know, my athletic trainer, Mike Stella, for strength and conditioning. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, he worked with Aljo. He went out in Vegas. When I was out in Vegas with um, Pompos, I got to see him. So, uh he had, he had to get his head right. I mean, I said I said it on the, the the week before. I said Bazooka's fight is with Bazooka. It's not physically. We know what he could do. So uh, whatever he did mentally to put himself in a good spot, you know, he did, and I think that's the type of performance you get. And I think he had the right dance partner too. So I think everything aligned in the right way, and and it, it ended up being a good night. And, and Ray, you know, uh, obviously you had two wins, all right? With yeah, Chris. 
you know, regardless of the controversy here, I'll let I'll let John get into that. I'm sure he's got a lot to ask you about that. But um, mm. as far as how he looked, the techniques, the strategy, it seemed like the mental game, everything seemed like it was better than I have seen in a very, very long time. So I imagine you had to be happy with that. Oh, extremely happy. And first off, before we even get going, man, he's been working with a guy down in Carolina, Jeff Jimmo. Yeah. This guy is the definition of a trainer. I mean, this guy, I don't know, he doesn't get the credit he deserves, but what a consummate professional, selfless, was there for the right reason. I couldn't even get him to go into the octagon. Uh, you know, he's not didn't want, you know, he doesn't want to take any pictures. He's humble, he's intelligent. He holds the pads great. <clears throat> I can't say enough about the guy. Anybody in the Car- North Carolina, I think he just opened up a new gym. Jim O, the yep. guy's a gem. You, you're really missing out if you don't train with the guy because I like – it's hard to, you know, when you go into that environment when you, you know, you see a guy who's training the guy that you trained for a bunch of years. Absolutely amazing. That's all, that's all I could say. Amazing individual. He's there for the right reason. And, you know, look uh, – the good news for me is that, you know, I could go into that octagon with Weidman and it's like we were there, you know, we've been there so many times. It's not, I know him, you know what I mean? And I agree exactly what you said, whatever he did to, to get ready. And I, and I will say this, he was healthy. And I always said this on the podcast, you could go back, a healthy Weidman's going to be a problem. He is getting older. He was cracking in the back. I was glad that I got to even hold mitts for him for a little bit in the back. I mean, it made me feel good. You know, I have a new hip and, you know, he was smashing the pads. Good. And, you know, even I think in between the third round, can you just show me the guy that's that was in the back again? You know, because he was he was on fire. And again, Jimmo, I, I, because I don't want to take any credit. I mean, I never take credit for what I do. Obviously, he's my guy and Weidman's gracious enough that, you know, he's loyal to, he, you know, he always wants me there. And, you know, even with Chris leading up to dinner, we had such a great time catching up. And, you know, sometimes I bust his balls and you don't see a guy. But then when I get with him, Kenny, it's like, it, it's, you know, it is family. It really is. You know, the yeah. kids are growing up. You know, I had my wife there. We all went out to eat. And it was just, you know, great thing. That's why I say, like, even... Jimmo, he didn't even come to the dinner. You know what I mean? Like oh, really? the guy, Jeff is just, I, I, I'm starting, like I learn a lot just on being, you know, I, I'm going to say selfless is the word. Like, again, he's, he's there for his job and he's getting the fuck out of there. And, you know, he's probably mad that I'm even complimenting him. That's the type of guy he is. I believe he'll be pissed off at me for complimenting him. Yeah. But I don't give a fuck. The guy's a good dude. And I'll tell you, anybody in that area is missing out on a, uh, the guy's got knowledge and you, you're crazy if you don't train with him. Yeah, he's he, had that Jimmo for years, Kenny, right? Jeff Jimmo in the Carolinas. Yeah. Maybe there's a new facility coming soon, but he's had Jimmo for a uh, while. No, he's got a new facility. And, and again, he did a great job with Chris. And that's why I thank him. I mean, it's not easy, you know, to get a guy that's trained with somebody for that many years and, and add to it. And he did it. All right, Kenny, you ready for me to go at this guy right now? Let's go. All right, so I texted Chris, right? Like, he won this fight on the strength of how well he performed in rounds one and two. Yes. To Kenny's point, he fought beautifully. He kicked. He was in control of this fight. And when Bruno Silva had moments there in round two, he answered them and then some to make sure he won that round. Um, But I believe we should be looking at a no contest here, we did ask the question, Ray, at Anik Florian Pod, how should the fight between Chris Weidman and Bruno Silva have been scored? 56% of people re- replied it should be a no contest. 20% said it should be a DQ win for Bruno Silva. 16% said it should be a technical decision as it was scored. And then 8% said it should be a TKO for Chris Weidman as initially scored. So based upon what you saw and if our Viewers haven't all seen the fight. You know, eye pokes were a prevailing theme in the fight. And there was almost like a combination of eye pokes, I think, at the end of the fight. Uh, And so Bruno obviously was furious. Ray, where do you stand on how this should be scored? Well, okay, regardless of how it's scored, we all agree we saw a different guy than we've seen in a while. That's the first thing. I mean, and and round one, you could score a 10-8 technically for control time. He was kneeing him in the head. I mean, I'm not saying it it could, but I mean, there was no evidence Bruno Silva was going to do anything. 
Round two, again, he came out and there might have been one I put, but what people have, you know, Weidman got thumbed in the eye. There's a picture of it. And because he didn't complain about it, everybody's acting like he's the guy. You know, they both I poked each other. One guy chose to handle it one way and one guy chose to handle it another way. It's an unfortunate thing in MMA. And I'm sure Weidman didn't do it on purpose. Uh, but I, you know what? No matter how they scored that fight as a coach and as, as his guy that's seen him and, you know, been through a lot of shit with him. I'm just happy to see the way he fought. I really yeah. do. And, he, you know, he had the guy, the guy went through a horrific injury. I'm I'm wincing while he's throwing that right kick. He don't give a fuck. This guy He's crazy. So I like what I saw. I don't care if they DQ. I don't care what it was. I, to me, it's a win either way. And I don't, you know, like, again, I pokes aside. That guy proved something to himself and to a lot of people at 39 years old. After a horrific injury like that, I don't give a shit. That's that's my really gut feel. I'm happy with what I saw. He's a winner no matter how they scored that fight. That's it. You know, if you want to know how I think they should have scored it, I didn't even think about it. No, I'm and that's fine. And I'm, I, saw. I am certainly not here to piss in your Cheerios. You no, know, I'm absolutely no thrilled. Kenny, the fight game has a lot of circumstances, right? And on the strength of winning those two rounds, Weidman obviously put himself in a position to deal with all of this better than Silva did, right? But Kenny, do you believe, based upon what you saw, that this should be a no contest? Or are you okay with the TD for Weidman? Yeah, I I don't think a no contest. Well, first of all, the, the fight ended, right? The the, the fight was it called. did. Yes, so it after was. After that, th there can. I don't think there can be a no contest. Or sure, can they can go back and look at the replay and see that if those eye pokes were what caused the end of the fight, then it can be a no contest. But they got Even late enough in the fight where it could be a decision, and and they went to the scorecards, and obviously those were clearly for for Weidman. Initially, right. it was a TKO, and then when they went back and looked at it, they changed it to a technical decision because of the uh, the eye poke. Is that how you understood it, Ray? I think that's how I understand. Yeah. I was just yeah. look I, like again. I'll be honest. It was a long weekend. Obviously, it was Easter Sunday. Yeah, I'm, I'm elated. I didn't. I didn't. Honestly, I didn't give it much thought. I was yeah. just so happy for him that he got to at least show you know the kind of the old Weidman going forward and you know handling adversity. I saw a Bruno Silva had one way of winning that fight, and I could tell you, being cage side, I, I it wasn't going to happen. You know, even if you listen in between rounds, I'm just saying stay focused. The only thing that could happen is we have a mental lapse and something happens, but I don't think it was going to happen. I, I thought even watching the tape on him, he's bombing, but being there, Kenny, I, I didn't sense he, he was going to hurt Weidman, to be honest yeah, that, with you. That, that's the way I saw it. You know, yeah. Ray, I, I think that Chris was winning that whole fight. I, I think that um, I, I probably would have liked to seen him use more takedowns at a certain point, but even then, he was out striking Bruno Silva, a guy who everybody thought was going to go right out there and knock him out. So from from, 100%. Uh, from that perspective, um, I, I think it's successful. Now, did the did the referee make a mistake in not seeing an, an eye gouge after there was already an eye gouge? You know, could you argue there could have been a point deduction? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, all things considered, you know, if I'm from the outside looking in and I have this guy named Chris Weidman who – you know, wanted to fight, wants to continue fighting. I see this as a very good sign yes. of a guy who really showed up to fight. He brought his skills. He showed his skills um, and rectified whatever happened in that last fight against Brad Tavares, where it seemed like it took him to, to get hurt before we actually saw Chris yes. White in there, right? Yes. And that was not the case. Even if he went out there and maybe – you know, got knocked out in round two, seeing how he performed in round one was a very good sign. Beautiful. And the fact that we got into round three in a fight where Chris was winning all of those rounds, in my opinion, I, I think it was yeah. a very good sign for Chris and, of course, Ray and, and all the guys that are around him. Yeah, and that's what I said, John. There's actually no pissing in my chair. Is. There's just not because I'm not even looking at a, a, a winner. Or I'm looking at what I saw and what I saw was so – surprising at you know not pleasantly surprising and that's why i said you know jimmo i give him credit I, i'm not going to hop on it but i mean he did a great job with him i didn't get to see him obviously we had the stories you know he's busting my balls now you know after the fight now can you come down and hold a couple of rounds hey like, listen we're gonna break balls till we're dead i mean it's not happening but i knew the week before the way he was attacking me 
that this guy was he was, he was the old guy. He was in a good spot. I didn't I didn't even have to see what he was doing. I just yeah. knew the way he sounded. And, you know, to answer your question about the DQ and stuff, all I'll say is this right after the fight. I did call my wife and say, grab that ticket off the counter. Just run down to the cage. Get the money as quick as possible before they overturn this motherfucker. Because we are, what the hell is going on? Yeah, I'm glad. Right. Did he really? Right. I, I don't know. Allegedly. Wow. John, yeah, that's think? a big number. That's right. a big number, baby. I, I don't know what's going to happen. But get over there quick. and ain't getting their right. money back. <laughs> right. Do you think a good, you know, because I, I hear a lot of people were just, up in arms about this fight, you know, for a variety of reasons. I mean, I heard everything to Chris Weidman has to be on steroids to he's yeah. the biggest cheater of all time with the eye gouges. What I like, there, there's just so many weird takes out there. Do, is the best way to rectify this whole thing is is to have them do a redo? Do, do, do we do, do they do a, re, a, a rematch here? Is that the best way to kind of settle this whole thing? Hey, listen, if it's up to me, do a fucking do the rematch without 100 percent. I don't think the UFC would do that, uh, but I do the rematch. Longo like says it. easy money on that rematch. Uh, you like right. that matchup. Uh, you want to do a rematch? I think it'll be way worse this time. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. Even at this at 39, going to be 40 years old. I say, dude, the, if that's what you wanted, if that's what rectifies it, 100%. And I yeah. think that that's that's John almost is he has my sentiment. Had to just right. pick up another paycheck. And I'm not saying you look, I, I, you know, he told me, oh, you were you, you were afraid for Bruno Silva. He's got good power, you know, like, get, like torture me. And, and I did. I, first of all, let me just say this. The love he got in that arena was nothing like what I'm hearing now from you guys the love he got in that arena yeah. was absolutely fantastic the reception at the hotel fantastic so yeah, yeah you in know, the new york I, tri-state area you guys would have been fucking dq'd anywhere else in well, america I, no i'm just kidding I, no, listen, can we break hey, listen, balls i mean am i putting yeah, our friendship no, on the line or can we no. bust balls today john you we're never putting our friendship on the line. what am oh, i as, just a, making a sure well, no, because i got shit. a lot more bullets but, in the chamber about you no, no, keep, fucking cheaters no, over the weekend keep shooting because you, you're shooting with a fucking water gun as far as i'm concerned <laughs> yeah. uh but no listen uh but i did talk to me because shit i can't catch a break they're fucking killing me and i go ah, it is what it is man what are you gonna do at this point all the shit we've been through and i can tell you i don't know steroids i don't know he didn't look like he was on any pds to me i saw huh. a little I saw a little flab around his belly button, if you want to know the truth. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know what the hell they're talking about. Unlike your other guy, Al Jermaine Sterling, nice to see the New Jersey crowd get behind yeah. Chris Weidman. I, I'm going to tell that's what I was going to say. Tri state area, Aljo got booed. But I will say this Aljo walking out without, he got a lot of love, Aljo, this time in Jerry. He got Good. a lot of love. That's great lot. to hear. And I'm sure he, he, he definitely. I think he got overwhelmed. That's how that's how much love he got. How's that? Which that's was amazing great to, hear. to hear. Yeah. That's cool. So overdue for Aljamain Sterling, right? It's got to be yeah. really difficult when you're fighting Henry Cejudo in the New York tri-state area to be sort of booed and not have the crowd the way it played out for him. So that warms my heart. Um but we're not in like a, you know an emotional romantic type of mood today. We're uh, we're wanting to come at these fucking cheaters. I mean, do I need oven mitts when I come trade with you guys? I mean, Jesus yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, I mean, you guys know I was a G Kundo start now, G Kundo <laughs> practitioner. Bruce so, Lee's favorite technique. I mean, yeah, uh, we, yeah. we might we might not have a leg to stand on in court. <laughs> I can tell you on the street, Kenny. I ain't breaking my hand anymore. Somebody's <laughs> yeah, somebody's getting jabbed in the eye if I could get there. <laughs> it would seem to me, though, Ray, in terms of Chris Weidman's fighting future, these minutes are wildly encouraging. And an immediate rematch with Bruno Silva is not something that uh, is going to whet his appetite. I wouldn't think. I think he wants to spin this thing forward and, uh, you know, get a big name potentially in the top 10 or 12. Right. I mean, what are we doing here? I mean, that's that's a question for him. You just posed it. I booked you, you on the program. You, you know, I don't like yeah, talking to athletes as much as. All right. As but I'd say you posed the question. Would a rematch be a fair thing to do? I said, a hundred. Absolutely. 100%. Kenny. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. holy shit. Kenny, yeah. this guy is <laughs> cantankerous. Did you look that word up again? You want to look that word up again? That's a good one. Can, you, know? you, can, you, pull out, can you have Cody pull out the dictionary? And give us a. Oh my I mean, God, can you imagine Chris Weidman, you know, pulling out the uh, 
you know, the digits in, in Rio de Janeiro against Bruno <laughs> Silva, you know, would have been a little different, you know, crowd would have been said, you're going to die instead of being like, you're the fucking man. <laughs> Just having fun. Just having oh, a good shoot. time. That's just, I'm that's really just, happy for that's you. That's hysterical, man. That's can I, funny. Can I circle back? Why is it my lighting's going up and down? Can I circle back to Dennis Bazookia yeah. for a second? So I know sometimes this is just the sports fan in me, but when I think about like the swing of this fight, right? Like Joaquin Buckley Saturday night, Kenny and Ray changed his life forever, right? Financially and otherwise, guy changed his life forever. Don't at me. Dennis Pazuki changed his life forever, right? Not just the bonus, right? But he's fighting for his job. And even though we made light of it last week, Ray, I just feel so good for this athlete, right? All the chips are in the center of the table to get a bonus, to get a win, to extend your UFC contract. It almost assures he's going to get a second one. Like, gosh, I mean, isn't there some relief? I feel like I'm almost more relieved than you are. Like there was well, just so much on the line for Dennis. <laughs> maybe and he that, fought beautifully. Yeah, maybe that's what he needed to have that type of pressure on him. You know, who knows? But yeah, no, of course, you know, look, this is, he's at the beginning of his career. This is, this, the UFC stuff, man, these guys, they fight their balls off and, you know, you know, you gotta, you gotta really get to the top to really make it worth it. So he's got a long way to go, but this is a great start. And again, hopefully this is what he mentally needed to get going and he could yeah. carry it forward. But, you know, Every, you know, I deal, obviously, we got 10 guys in the UFC, you know, guys that complain about what they're getting paid. They've been there for, for six years. So there's, there's a long way to go, and he's going to have to stay focused if he wants to get there for sure. All right. So coming up on Wednesday, Kenny is going to give us a prediction on Charlie Campbell and Trevor Peak in the lightweight division coming up this weekend. Charlie Campbell minus 225, the betting favorite, Trevor Peak plus 185. Uh, are you boots on the ground, wheels up to Vegas? What are we doing? No, no, I'm taking this one off. Okay. Uh, I'm going out to Vegas the following week. Hopefully, we'll hook up when we're out there. But I, I'm predicting Charlie Campbell by murder. Wow. I hope, uh, I You're talking it, first UFC fatality, huh? Can you be a little softer? It's, it's, a, it's a possibility. No, Charlie's, wow. Charlie, Charlie's a monster. He is. I don't see anything in this guy that could actually – stop him i guess yeah. i don't know but charlie charlie could crack and he's 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 vicious i'm saying that's a the minus 220 is the right number on that but uh yeah. trevor peak is tough you know yeah uh there's one path to victory for him to absorb a lot of damage and somehow the other guy guesses out but charlie's charlie's a beast and he's 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 pretty dangerous if you're not squared away you don't you don't want charlie charlie will will get he's he's tough man are you an april fool's day guy ray do you have any pranks planned no okay yeah that's good it's that's just nonsense <laughs> you know there's enough enough uh, chaos well, and well, noise it, in the world what that what, what's today's date april it's 1st? april 1st yeah Wow. Thus the question, right? We won't do another yeah. April first podcast probably for four or five years. So uh, I would I would have came prepared. I had a look, it was a long weekend, man. Yeah. It really was a long yeah. emotional weekend. Yeah. It really was. Well, hopefully you don't have a flat tire when you go outside, my man. But we appreciate the time. <laughs> Congratulations on two big wins. We wish yeah, you was... and Charlie Campbell and everybody all the best. And uh in terms of us having time together, you know, Ken Flo's gonna be out there for UFC three hundred. Oh, Why don't you man, hang out great. with him? Why don't you hang out with it. him? Let's do it. All right, maybe Let's, we'll all convene at the uh, the penthouse there at the Virgin, courtesy of Paradise Canteen, as Big Ron Pellegrino. Maybe hey, we'll all uh, break bread or something. Come on, Big Ron. Come through, baby. Let's do it. Guy always right. delivers. Ray, when are you getting out there? I think Wednesday. Ray, when are you getting out there, man? Aljo at 45, I got, huh? I got, huh? I, got, I got to check the, my plate. I think Wednesday. All right. When I'll are you out getting there? out there? Tuesday, Tuesday, April 9th, Ken Flo. When are you? Uh, you're not coming till Thursday, Friday. Thursday, Ken Flo? Yeah, I think uh, late Thursday night, like so, like midnight, something like that. So what, Friday, early Friday morning, technically. And Kenny, you may be flying back home before the fights, or are you undecided? Uh, I may be flying back before the fights. All right. Oh, we got to get, this is going to be Yeah, tight. we got to get Ken Flo in the building. Anybody else ever around. for Ken for UFC 300? No. All right. Hey, Ray, <laughs> great day, better evening. Anything else before we let you go? That's it, man. That's it. If you're around later, I'm going to give you a buzz. My line is always open for you. As I've right. told people repeatedly, I have my iPhone right here. I have my list of favorites, and uh, there's seven names on there. One of them is Ray Longo. So. <laughs>
All right, I'll give you a buzz later. All but right. guys, great weekend, great time today. Uh, hats off again, you know, no pissing in my Cheerios. Everything, Good. what I saw Good. was positive and either way, as a coach, I was happy as hell. My man. All right, Much take love. it easy, guys. Congratulations. Congrats, right. See ya. All right, take there he is, Ray Longo, with us every week here on the Anakin Florian podcast. Always fun uh, after <laughs> a big win or two for Ray Longo. Am I making you laugh today, kid, huh? You yeah, like that? Uh, hilarious, man. Listen, as a coach, you got to feel good. I haven't been with Chris for forever. Just seeing that your guy was different than the last time out. He was coming back, you, you know, to give a context. Again, people who don't know the story, if you've been hiding in a hole somewhere, you know, seeing how Ray, how Chris looked last time out, coming off of that crazy injury, you know, the surgeries that followed, and seeing how he looked this time out, he looked like a completely different dude, man. So, you know, that that's got to feel good for for your friend, for your student, you know, for your fighter. That's all good signs, man. That's a good night for Ray because you never know how it's going to go when you when you're bringing one guy, let alone a couple guys, yeah. into the UFC's octagon. All right, so we can all agree Chris Weidman, total inspiration, leg snapped in half. He's had like 50 surgeries. He also reps the stars and stripes loud and proud. Chris Weidman's the fucking man. I texted him as much. Now can we just briefly touch on the lead story? I mean, Kempflo, that's a no contest every day of the week. It was a fucking combination of eye pokes. What? And I'm not going to be so suggestive to say that because this fight was in Atlantic City, and the crowd was firmly behind Chris that that played into this. But I think to totally yeah. dismiss that as a factor maybe would uh, would speak to some ignorance. I mean, Kenny, most people believe this should be a no contest. Do you have any opinion on yeah. that? No, and, and it could have. It certainly make, could justify that. No question about that. I think that what's interesting is, is the fact that I, I think more than anything else, the referee didn't see it. It was like a one-two. And if you didn't have the video, in my opinion, how how would you know that that was a a a an eye gouge and not a punch? Like it happened so quick. Um, so I'm not knocking the referee for 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 seeing that or not seeing that. But um, yeah, when you go back and the fight was called, it was in round three. You see that you see that it was an eye gouge. You had the history of eye gouges prior. Um, well. Yeah, you you definitely could have, could have called it a no contest, and it was my understanding that I thought that it would automatically go to the scorecard. So my bad. I what the fuck do I know? Yeah, but um, so then it would have gone to the scar scorecards, or, or you could also argue that shit. He could have removed one point or even two points, right? I, I don't know if you could do that after the fight is called, um, but you could even argue that maybe Bruno would have won just because of the the removal of points. I don't know, but it was. It was crazy. It was unfortunate. Um, Chris looked great, but it also doesn't take away from the fact that there were some serious fouls that, that were there. I don't think they were intentional. I no. just think the way that he was holding the hand out there, you know, we've seen John Jones be accused of it, you know, and guys will do that all the time because you're used to when you do hard sparring, having those big gloves, your hand is open in those gloves and you use it, use the hand to parry. To parry a punch coming at you, to frame on a head coming at you. The problem is you're not using big boxing gloves when you're fighting in the octagon. You're using those, those, you know, those open fingered gloves. And if you're using that same technique and you're used to doing that, then guess what? You're going to have more of a propensity for doing eye gouges. Still yeah. wrong. I'm not yeah. justifying yeah. it. It's just how people train matters. That's what's going to lead to yeah. that. And when Bruno Silva. I poked Chris Weidman with the thumb. You know, he was throwing a punch. I don't right. know exactly what the rule book says about that. I mean, you still can't thumb somebody in the eye, but no. he was actually throwing a punch, whereas Weidman's advances really were uh, were illegal, if uh, inadvertent and unintentional. The rule says if an accidental foul causes an injury severe enough for the referee to stop the bout after half of the scheduled rounds, plus one second of the fight has been completed, the bout will result in a technical decision awarded to the fighter who is ahead on the scorecards. Yeah, so even if, and we touched on this earlier, but even if a point had been deducted, you know, at the end of the fight to Chris Weidman, you know, he still would have won on the scorecards at that point in time because he had won rounds one and two on all three judges' scorecards. But we congratulate Chris Weidman. You know, I do think Bruno Silva should appeal, will appeal. And I do think the Nevada State Athletic Commission, and I put that commission on a pedestal, and I think rightfully so, you know, I think Jeff Mullins and those guys would uh, would probably overturn this and uh, it would go into the books as a no contest. Um, all right, we congratulate all the other winners 
Kyle Nelson and Nursultan Ruja Boyev, Chidi Enjo Kawani, Nate the Train, Vina Janji Doba stopping Lupi Godinez's winning streak, Julio Arce and all the other winners, Jacob Malcoon with a nice stoppage there on Andre Petrosky. We got to bounce on out of here. We will be back later this week. Some thoughts on UFC 305 coming up in Perth, Western Australia. Also a look ahead to all of the betting lines at UFC 300 and a full preview with predictions for the UFC fight night this weekend and the main event at the apex between Brendan Allen and Chris Curtis. Thank you to our guests, Jimmy Smith and Ray Longo. Our executive producer is Cody Merrow. You can find full-length episodes of the program on the DraftKings YouTube channel, clips on the Anakin Florian Podcast YouTube channel, anything you need. Ooh, voice crack there. Anything you need related to this program, you can go to johnannick.com. All Anakin Florian Podcast merchandise is there, including all of our One More Sleep designs, 20% off with promo code One More Sleep. Ken Flo, you're the fucking man. Nice t-shirt. Do it, man. We'll talk to the rest of you guys in about 48 hours. Until then, stay healthy, be well, and uh, we'll talk to you in a few days. Y'all Hands on the bar, he's an open man. He's cornbread. Oh.